Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Arizona Real Estate News Show with Pat, What's My Rate McMasters, and Ruby and Jackie, the dynamic duo from Century 21 Arizona Foothills. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Great. So, so rumor has it We're there was some golf anymore. taking place up in Scottsdale. And, uh, and Pat, I didn't even have to ask you if you went. I can see it. I, I can't lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you need to have an ice pack on your face. I kind of feel like it right now. It's a little, it feels like it's, it's a little hot. A little, I should have used sunscreen. There's a thing that was invented. It's called sunscreen, but we were only get, I only went out there for a couple hours, but uh, being a redhead. Wow. Um, it, it feels, it feels more like radiation. My computer's going. Rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to go to my dermat. I'm going to go to my dermatologist tomorrow morning. <laughs> Oh, no. gonna he's just going to wave you off. He's going to hit the hell with you, like Pat. You don't I, listen to me. I, so. I have to laugh real quickly. Quick story with the, you know, went on a cruise last, last year. And, um, I, uh, was at the Caribbean, you know, for about a week. Mm. And, uh, there was one day where I would just, I, I, I've got, I, I, I got slits everywhere, you know, for, you know, they took stuff out. And I, one day we went to the Virgin islands and I, I, the sun is more intense, obviously down there. And I had sunscreen on and I was like, I was like this, I was like my label right here. And I had to go see the dermatologist oh my Lord. Uh, the next week. And I canceled the appointment for two weeks later. Cause I was like, I, I, there's no way I'm going this, this red is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so I canceled the appointment oh, made two weeks geez. later until it subsided. So anyway, enough of that. So it's that, yeah. it's that Irish in you, huh? Yep, exactly. So yeah, oh. I, my, my dad, if he spent any time in the sun at all, because he's he's Irish and uh, um, uh, man, he'd fry. Yeah. But my brother and I, we we'd go out, we tan. No big. My sister, she'd fry. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about good old fashioned Arizona real estate because um, January was kind of clipping along pretty good, and February was looking pretty good. And and uh, as we watch the numbers, you know, a lot of the commentary is, um, you know buying activities picking up will this stay and then rates went down you know below six <clears throat> and now this week it's about 6.49 we'll touch on that in a minute but it it it's because it's such a rate driven market there's numbers we're going to have to watch and this this is the best one for me which is um because I, I get engrossed in the numbers every every day and so if there is a change um, it actually correlates with the Cromford Market Index. Uh, and what I'm seeing is we had 3,897 new new listings come on and 3,222 go under contract, which isn't a bad bad number, but um, we're kind of flatlining a little bit there. And you can see that new listings are kind of starting to come up, except for today, they'd zip down a little. But if this gap right now between new listings and contracts is 675 homes. We know historically that if we get above 800 to 1,000, that we get start experiencing downward pricing pressure. So that's that's where that graph helps me. Um, now I can go back in and start looking at um, other data like Redfin and Cromford and take a look at their charts and see what's going on. But that one's more um, kind of like the, canary in the coal mine for me. So if we get up to 800 to a thousand, then it tells you, well, you know, prices are going to, going to have to pull back a little bit. And then we're going to need to watch these numbers as we go forward. This is accepted contracts and the yellow ones down the bottom is back, back on market. So you can see after Christmas, things shot up pretty good. And then we look at our pending listings and they're climbing, but you can see that it has climbed like this every year because that's just our seasonality here. You know, you're you're digging out of Christmas, and, and pending listings are pending listings are increasing. Um, and then I wanted to go to this, and this is closings over list price, and we're sitting here at about fourteen percent. And where it gets interesting is when you get down to the price points. So, like between three and four hundred thousand. Um, there's 175 homes that sold for on an average of 5,000 over list. And when you hover over this, it says um, the minimum over list was a buck and the maximum was 77,000. Hmm. So it said, but 50% of the sales were 5,000 or less over list. 
So half of them. Just, so they're going, I think they're going over lists so they can get help with closing costs, especially in that lower three to 400,000, 400 to 500,000. There's 91 homes, pretty much the same story. So um, that's one to watch going forward. It doesn't, it kind of tells you whether or not there's really any bidding activity going on. But unfortunately on these charts, we don't get to see how much seller contribution. Hey we, Rick. Yes. We just had a listing. Fogel yep. Ruby. Same thing. So that sat on the market for a long time. And when we finally got to the price point we needed to be, which was 318, uh, we actually ended up with two offers and brought it up to 321, split the concessions yeah. with them. And it's a VA. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Um, here's, here's the reason I pulled this up. The monthly average sales price per square foot. So, so right right here, right at the top, right? This is when interest rates went up to like seven. Seven a quarter. Seven and a half. Right? Remember this, Pat, right here? They went down to 5.5. .5. Mm -hmm. See the impact on on prices? Once we got to that magic 5.5, five, then uh, the sales price leveled off. Yep. But then when it started getting up above six again, yep. then we started going down. And uh, so so what I'm saying is we, we know what we know, but we don't know what we don't know. But we do know <laughs> that when interest rates go <laughs> shooting up in the mid sixes, that, that it slows down quite a bit. So, um, and Pat, I'm going to tee you up here. And uh, I'm, I'm anxious to Oh, we're using the, goal, the golf theme again, huh? <laughs> Teeing it up. I like it. Yes, yes. We're going to, well, gee, I wonder. Let's stay with the golf from. theme, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I want to see where we're at within the, the channel here. So raise it up a little yep, bit. Yep, there we go. Again. There's a channel. I mean, uh, once again, we're kind of this channel that we've been stuck in. Um, really, uh, we had, obviously, a couple of days ago, we had some surprise, you know, obviously last week. Um, with employment numbers. But once again, Barry Habib says that uh, the numbers, the employment numbers, when you start really digging into them, they kind of they kind of smell. There's something that smells within those employment numbers, which I believe him. So we, we kind of based out here, which is good. I mean, if you see a bad day like that, you see like to see a basing out. There was a basically a 10 year auction today that was they said it was met with pretty good demand. So that's a good sign that uh, the 10 year hit three, you know, was at three sixty five. Um, you know, there's some support around the 364, 365. So it's at 360 right now is down seven ba basis points today. So, I mean, you know, there could be enough demand, obviously with the CPI numbers coming out next week, uh, they've got, there could be some demand for the bonds when, the, when an auction, when they, you know, these auctions, they buy the bonds, you know, when you can tell the anticipation, you know, what the, what, you know, they look at the demand and if there's weak demand, that means rates probably go up, but there was strong demand here. Um, I think the bid was, there was a strong bid to cover offer, meaning there's a lot more bids and, you know, to cover it, a lot of demand. So that helps the treasury. And so going forward into next week, you know, maybe people think that rates have kind of even peaked short term. So, but the, um, you know, the Fed has been just, be, you know, they said that they're going to react to the, the, the data that comes out. You know, they saw the strong labor market, but like you said, Barry says there's weakness behind that. And um, there's a lot of slack. Well, don't they revise that? Don't they revise that number later? Yeah, they do. They, they revise it, and it's usually re revised down dramatically. You know, it's like, oh, it wasn't 564,000 jobs, let's say, but it was only 125,000. So, you know, I'm surprised that these people don't catch on to that because there's always revisions the next month or two. So, but, you know, he said in his speech the other day, he said what the word, you know, I heard this on, saw this, you know, he said the word di disinflation 13 times. So there definitely is a changing of the guard here the last month or so, last couple months, and you can see it. But um, it's been, it's going to be just watch and see, you know, I mean, it just seems as though I'm, I'm watching Barry, I'm listening to Barry and because um, I think I, he's on the right track, you know. Hey, Pat. Well, uh, do you think when's the CPI come out? Does it come out in a few days? Yeah, next week, uh, the fourteenth Tuesday. So, yep. 
next Tuesday. So was it the Washington Press Club that was interviewing uh, Chairman Powell, and they were really trying to pin him down on <laughs> on some specifics that he would he wouldn't bite, but he did say that our debt is approaching unsustainable levels. I'm glad to see he finally piped up on that. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, they did also say, too, that, you know, they said they're expecting, you know, significant declines in inflation, but it will take not just this year, but next year to get it down to 2%. So, I mean, I'm hearing and seeing and watching the financial news and reading it that they're like, this is going to be more of a drawn out, you know, versus... You know, the Fed say we're going to you know, re- keep raising rates and we're going to be in this. I think we're going to be in this channel for a period of time. Um, it's not going away anywhere soon. Unfortunately, we all we all have grown accustomed to a period of time just being a few months instead of a couple of years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the market's getting kind of accustomed to it, too, but, uh, as you see it You know, in that channel. The rates are kind of trading in this channel, too. You know, I mean, um, so yields are kind of spike, you know, just kind of in this channel, which is good. I mean, rates. They'll peak down, you know, they'll get into the high fives. Now they're, like you said, six and a quarter, six and three eighths, um, you know, 6.3. So they're, it's amazing. I, I can't remember. I was just thinking about this when you were talking about the rates, Rick, a couple minutes ago, about the five and a half. Um, it, it is amazing how, like, once again, the demand is up or down based on rates. I've never seen it. I've never seen – a period of time in here. the 90s there hmm? in the 90s there was a period of time the early 90s and i remember that and it was one of the only other times i've ever seen rates somewhat move quickly mm-hmm. and i don't remember why that went on it was so long ago but i remember that it, it we were concerned because it was like the rates went up suddenly and the market just stalled i'll never forget that and it was, you know, I, I can't remember what prompted that, but it was, I want to say like around 91, 92. 92 was a tough well, time. I remember when they came down um, because I was living in California and that was before, um, uh, was that before cell phones? No, it was, it was, it was, it was before, we had caller, cell phones. before caller ID um, at home. And, and uh, at dinner time, we'd get all these phone calls, you know, about, you know, have you refinanced? And every day, so much so that when my phone rang, I would answer it and go, hello, we're happy with our current mortgage. And then you'd hear them hang up. <laughs> yeah. And that was in 92? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was 92, yeah. 93. Yeah. Well, wow. and I remember because when I first started, rates were double digits. And we did, at the time that I started, they had been single. They had been, of course, really high. I mean, I grew up in the business. I remember my mom, you know, rates at 18%. And when I got in, they were around 12. And then we had dipped below um, 10. Right. Dipped below for a very, very brief period of time, right below 10 in single digits. Went back up again, and the market just kind of. But we were doing back then, you still had the FHA, VA, no calls. Like probably 50% of our business that we did at that time was snagging those 8 and 9% that existed out there with the no calls. But then after. You know, they went away. Everybody, when the rates came back down, people refinanced out of them. But I'll tell you what, when you could come across those, even in the mid-90s, people that hadn't refied out of them yet, it, they were like gold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, just to give just well, – Ruby, Attic. A... Well, go ahead. I, I was just going to say ahead, about man. next week about the CPI numbers. I mean, if, you know, if you see a surprise number like we saw, you know, back um, – I mean, was it last month? You know, they, there's if there's a big appetite for this 10-year – I mean, you can certainly see, you know, a nice little run again on, you know, a nice afternoon for bonds and the you know, rates again, you know, after next Tuesday. So it's it's like it almost feels like people are kind of waiting for another chance. You know, the investors to lock in and then rates come down and uh, it could be a surprising report again. So it's going to be some activity here in the next couple of days. Well, I saw a video today. Uh, the gentleman flew in from Texas to check out the Arizona market. So he was just going to new build communities and showing all the homes, you know, like, okay, you know, these guys, they're going to build 400 homes. And he was lamenting on how we have a severe water shortage, completely ignoring the facts behind the water and the fact that you can't build a development unless you can, you know, the Arizona department uh, verifies that you have a hundred year supply. Um, But 
having said that, he he was spouting that this is not a good time to buy and that these builders are going to be in big trouble very soon and that they're hardly moving anything. And our sales this year compared to last year for new home construction is only down 6%. And Ruby, I know you're in the new build communities quite a bit. Are you sensing that they're ready to go? Bankrupt? No, not at all. In fact, um, I have, I'm on quite a list where lots of them, the agents are sending me their lists weekly with their um, inventory, what their um, interest rates <clears throat> are, the blocks of interest rates. Um, in fact, I got a new one from Lennar this morning that they have a four and a quarter um, with a closing um, with yeah. their inventory right now. So that's good. Well, well I got one from four Lennar five. too that said that they're going to raise their prices by 5% at the right. end of the month. Right, and their prices. So if they were going to yeah, crash. No, there's, I don't see a crash um, as far as that goes, and I don't see them going bankrupt. And and I do have four new builds under contract. Or, well, I'm, I've closed out a couple, but in just the last two months, I've done four new builds. So. Well, I, I couldn't help but comment and say, you know, look, if you're going to talk about 2008, um, we had 58,000 listings and we had, 10,000 foreclosures. So we had 60,000 homes mm -hmm. available compared to 14,000 today. So in order for us to have this crash that you speak of, that number is going to have to change dramatically. And I said, in new construction numbers that we're seeing, we're only down 6% versus last year. And I said, I hope you're sticking around and you can enjoy the game, the Super Bowl. Well, somebody commented and go, you just wait. And I said, well, wait for what? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. I mean, what, what's, what's going to be I the think catalyst? Some of the hesitation of people, um, some of that, re some of the reason that might be down a little bit was because of build times over the last two years, lack of supply, not being able to get them done. People don't want to wait, you know, eight to 10 months, 12 months, 14 months with some of the communities. Mm -hmm. So they're still stuck in thinking that it's that long, but a lot of the builders have now streamlined where they have a product, A, B, C, and D package. And <clears throat> you don't <clears throat> go to the design center so much anymore. You get to choose what's in there or they've already chosen it. So most of their, it's kind of like a, um, it really is streamlined now that the, the contract and the supply and demand is there. They have what they need. I don't know if that came out right. Yeah, they figured it out. I mean, there was there were times if you just, if you're waiting for that glass door for your shower and if it broke during during construction, you had to wait a month to get the next glass door for yeah, your shower. Yeah, and that's not so much happening now. They're back on track. Mm -mm. Well, they were closing them out with appliances on some mm -hmm. of them. Oh, yeah. 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 Appliances are a hard time. I mean, Rick, I mean, obviously last year with the new builds, the people took risk. And, you know, like you said, like Ruby said, you're, you're 12, 13, 10, 11, 12 months out with rates moving around like they did. Rick, you had that situation where lady uh, fell off because uh, the rates, the rate, rate lock expired, right? And then. Yeah, we looked at a listing this week and, uh, and we said um, it was only on the market less than five days and then it fell out. And I said, well, that's. That's usually, that usually means a bad inspection, um, but that usually happens within a 10-day window. And I called the agent, and she goes, no. She said, we got the offer, and then her rate lock expired. She wasn't aware of that, and so her payment went up beyond her comfort level. How much did it go up? Like so $250 or something like that? Or? 250 bucks. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it goes – like you said, it goes back. I mean, we're, we've been talking about this, but it, I'm just amazed at how – the demand and supply and everything is really being affected by rates um, up and down mm -hmm. yep. in this time frame. Well, I'm I just saw amazed. another video, um, Jackie, I don't know, you may have seen it too. I you don't think you've seen this one, but um, this gentleman was talking about um, open door and that it's particularly in Phoenix and that, that the example of, how much they're lowering prices is what's happening in this market. And I, I made the comment and said, well, they bought high and then they marked them too high. So you can't really look at how much they're bringing prices down and compare that to the rest of the market. I mean, they only have, they have less than 800 homes on the market now. So if, if the normal market said the house is worth 
$500,000. And that's the average for whatever size of home you get for that. But Open Door came in and paid five seventy five, dollars and then they marked it up to six and a quarter. Well, that's that's not an adjustment in the market. That's just mm-hmm. what they did. Mm-hmm. So now they're pulling back to reality and everybody's viewing it. Oh, look at this crash. No, they just got stupid. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I, I, uh, um, cause somebody sent this, sent him to me today and said, have you seen this guy? And his headline, his thumbnail is foreclosures up 533%. <laughs> what a joke. And he's I- right. He's right. Cause here we are right there. We have yeah. 409 and we did have like 90, 70, an average of 70 down here. Well, that's 500%. Yeah. But this was forbearance. So again, I, I end up repeating my same line that says, you know, a large percentage of a small number is still a small number. But, <laughs> um, you know, I know Jackie, you, you, you reach out to me quite a bit and go, I wish these guys would stop doing this. I know. There's so much clickbait out there. And then it's like they just don't have their facts correct. Or they correct. don't give enough. I, I've kind of been on a... Sorry, they don't huh? give enough information. Like you just gave the graph to show the reality of what 5% right. is, 500% is. But it's so minimal when you really look at it. Yep. It's crazy. I, I've been kind of on a tangent lately, like trying to straighten people out on some of these videos that, and they're making them about Phoenix. First of all, they don't live here. They're not boots on the ground. They're not experiencing our market. And half the stuff they're reporting about right now are the December numbers. Yeah. Yes. I was yeah. like, well, what? That doesn't even make sense. Our inventory is building our sales of, you know, basically the lowest they've ever been. But you're talking about December's sales. Yeah, and then yeah. the increase of inventory we've had from 4,500 homes to 14,000 homes, which, you know, our average is 2425. I mean, do you want, you want 4,500? Irritating. Do you want 4,500 homes on the market and you've got 20 bids and no. 50,000 over the offer? No, you, yeah. that's not a normal market. I mean, that's not a normal market. No. So, so. If you look at this, you can say, you know, listings are up X percentage. And my answer is, well, I hope so. Yeah. Because this was And we're awful. still low. Yeah. We're just <laughs> awful. And there was a chart that I put together. Oh, shoot. I can't find it. Maybe uh, for the next video. But I was I was comparing uh, um, 2008 again. And um, the, the, the differences between now and 2008, you can... You can beat them to death, but uh, you know it's still and which, which we have, right which here, is good though. I like to talk about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. And I saw another video about Wells Fargo just came out. It was, I think, it came out yesterday about Wells Fargo, the biggest mortgage backer, has backed out. They're you know gotten rid of all these employees because they see what's happening. They don't talk about all the trouble that Wells Fargo got themselves in. And that had a big part of why Wells Fargo is not doing it now. Yeah. Well, they they have a cap on their uh, on their balance sheet by the feds because they got slapped pretty hard. So they oh yeah they, they said, well, we're going to concentrate on our credit card market versus mortgages. So we're going to continue to service the mortgages that we have, uh, but we're going to move towards a more profitable segment, which is credit cards, because I don't think they're allowed to grow both right and it's you know the, i don't know all the internet but it has nothing that people like they know housing's going to crash so they're getting out yeah that's not <clears throat> at all what they're doing no. just changing up their business model a little bit yeah so yeah. But, uh, it's just irritating when you see the people out of state giving the arizona numbers and, and they're just using the wrong information not giving all the facts and it's just yeah, just in one week, I Stay saw in your lane. The, the number said 60, 60%. And we're talking about inventory. And that's where I said, well, yeah, look, look where we were. I'm I'm glad we're up 60%. Mm-hmm. That's not an alarming number. Yeah. I wish we were up 90%. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I would love to see the thumbnail that says Arizona listings up 150%. Good. Now we have a, you know. Well, it gives up homes to choose from. Yeah, yeah, choose, homes to choose from and buyers are not getting squeezed. And yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a lot better market. Yeah, well, so and it, it, 
if we get back down into the fives again and we don't build up an inventory, yeah. we're going to get ourseles in trouble we're again. And so, well, I, one of our know, listeners had a really good point this week in, in one of the comments that he said, uh, it's Sean up in Seattle. And he said that when you look at what we call rate lock, you know, you're sitting on your home because you've got a 3% mortgage. So you don't want to sell it and get a 6%. Mm -hmm. No. So you're going to stay put, right? The people that bought in 2022 have a double whammy. One, they love their rate. And two, now they don't have the equity to sell. So those people aren't going anywhere. So you've got those two forces that are keeping us from adding more inventory mm -hmm. to the market. And to your point, Jackie, if we get down um, in the, in the fives again, it's going to, going to get a little, not crazy, but it's going to, it's going to pick up. But then we got accused and this gentleman that was here from Texas, he says, I watched a few YouTube videos of people from Arizona and he says, and they're all saying that things are good and things are really going and like, no, not really. We're just saying things have mm -hmm. improved. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't seen any that said, here we go. I just getting the, the numbers. They are what they are, I guess is what right. I'm saying. And he was probably talking about you, Ruby, because you're famous <laughs> now. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> That's an inside joke because somebody recognized Ruby in a store this week. And I said, I told you that would happen. <laughs> it's happened a few times yeah. now. Yeah, that's twice. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> so they walked Rick, right past me. So, <laughs> Oh, Rick, it's happened to you numerous times you've told us. I, yeah. I get yeah, that. Oh, there's yeah, that guy with the red I face. That kind of... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they can well, they can feel they see you coming. They, they can feel, feel me. Down the yeah. the heat. <laughs> you can feel the heat. It's warm. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> so that must be Pat. Now, Pat and I are talking about rebranding our Friday show, and we're going to call it the Mick Report. McCone, Mick Masters. <laughs> yeah, oh, I like it. Yeah, the two the two Irishmen do that. So. Yeah, yeah, the two Irishmen, the Mick. So that means we'll have to drink beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to join you just you for go. drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so we're going to do that, and I am going to restart the uh, morning lives Monday through Thursday. Um, you know, there usually isn't a lot to report, but there's a lot of things out here that are moving. I thought it'd just be fun to kind of get back onto that. So I'm going to start them at eight thirty again, and and uh, they, they won't they won't be long videos. They might be, you know, eight minutes just updating people here. Here's what we got, and I'm not going to completely bore everybody with the Cromford report, but obviously I'm going to show you the seven day moving average and we'll talk about what's changed. Uh, we'll touch on rates and what's happening on rates and uh, just to help you have a heartbeat on the market. And I will probably praise other YouTubers and gripe about others as well. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Cool Sounds beans. Like fun. It's a crowded field, yep. uh, you know, and so you have to be, you have to be careful. I mean, I've said some things that make people mad and I get it. And, uh, um, I made a comment the other day about greed and uh, oh boy, this guy got mad. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, right. well, everybody have a super weekend coming up. Uh, it's going to be the Super Bowl. So I hear there are, they're expecting a thousand private jets flying in. Most of them come into, uh, wow. we have six airports where wow. they fly into. And uh, the most popular one is the Scottsdale yeah. airport. And then they usually take a helicopter or a limo out to the game wow. from there. And uh, I know when I lived in North Central Phoenix, we used last time we had Super Bowl, we just saw these helicopters constantly going back and forth before the game and right after the game was over. So, and you know that there's a 30 mile no fly zone around the stadium. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! No and drones either. It's going. Oh, <laughs> if you launch a drone, you're in jail for a long oh, time. Oh yeah, they, really. Um, yeah, yep. yeah, and they they've got Black Hawk helicopters and uh, Border Patrol helicopters, and so they're patrolling not only the airspace, but they've got this high tech equipment that can see, uh, you know, an ant on your shoe from up there, and uh, they like the balloon. Doing what's the called technology they use for the oh. balloon? Oh. Balloon, yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> oh god. The only, the only good news about that balloon was just the memes that you saw. Yeah. But but they were they, they got helicopters they call radi radiation sniffers. So they fly over and they they you know monitor and get a um, a mean line on radiation. So in case they see a spike, then they 
know there's a problem. But if you fly into that or start approach that 30 mile radius, they will show up next to you and direct you wow. out of it. Is wow, what that's said. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see a lot of, a lot of buzzing around, a lot of activity. So it's really fun to watch all that stuff, even if you don't go to the game, because I don't have an extra 50 grand laying around to go to the football game. No kidding. Uh, I've tried, you know, lenders are famous for giving us, you know, tickets to ball games. And I fail in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> that was a and tough one, though. This was a tough down, one so. to get tickets yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let you slide this time. Thank Matt, you. So. <laughs> Everybody have a great weekend. Pat, go lather up your face. <laughs> I will. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. <laughs> See you guys. Talk to you. Bye. Bye. Bye.